Hi everyone, I'm Robbie Herring and I'm here tonight for Flying Unicorn and we are going to be making a birdhouse tonight and I really like off the page and I like all the mixed media pro uh, all the products I can speak uh, so I'm going to share some announcements with y'all and then we're going to get started on the thing okay here we go move my keyboard out of the way and it's banging into my camera okay first off we're gonna have 10% off in the Ustream store and all the did get birdhouses in the store so they will be there but as you all know if you were here a little bit early um, Alda's having internet problems so they're not loaded yet but as soon as she can get it all loaded it will be there and it will be 10% off as you as always and then next week we're gonna have Lynn can't wait to see what she does she always does really neat projects and then um, we're having something special for y'all. We're going to do a special Saturday show, and it's going to be on March 14th at 11 a.m. with Delana. And then don't forget that we also have a lot of stuff going on in the forums. Uh, we have Playdate Thursday going on. We have Mojo Monday, and I did the Mojo Monday this, this week, too. So I'd love to see what y'all's take on all the sketches because they're always just beautiful. All right, now, first, before we pan down, I'm going to show y'all the birdhouse. And I'm going to pull back a little. And so here it is. And if you've been on Facebook or on Flying Unicorn, you've already seen it. But you can see that we used a lot of mixed media. I am used a lot of mixed media products. I can't say that word tonight. And let's see. It's like so funny. It's not like looking in a mirror when you're holding it, but it kind of is. But you can see that we did, we took care of the whole thing and the whole, so anywhere you sit it, you could sit it in an arrangement or just on a shelf. But even if you put it like in the center of a table, um, if we do the back, it doesn't matter. It's going to be okay from every side. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and pan down. So hang on one sec. Y'all bear with me. Hope you don't get seasick. And it made sure my camera was tight, so hopefully I won't have it dropping like I did the other time. Let's see. Let's get it a little bit here. So, Okay. Now, because of when I ordered, my, my, my idea was to do them both exactly the same and mixed up colors. But as I started going through the process, I started thinking, you know, I kind of like just all the yellow. So I decided to do pink for the next one. And since we know Alda does a lot of pink, hopefully this one will appeal to her. So, also, the other thing, just to tell you up front is, is that there's quite a few steps in this. And some of the things we're going to do, it truly needs to be dry. And instead of having y'all listen to the dryer all night, which I got a new toy, I got a new Tim Holtz dryer, which is much quieter. Um, I went ahead and did the sides and the back and a little bit. But we're still going to do every single thing that I did. We're just going to... Some of it's going to be pre-done. So, to start off with, and if y'all want to, I'll tell y'all the yellows I use. They're actually on the supply list, so just to keep it a little bit more simple, I'm not even going to go through the different yellow pro uh, products, but be sure, I really am having trouble with that word, be sure that you can look on Facebook or at Flying Unicorn to see them. So, I started out with simply... Uh, putting a light coated gesso on here and if you it's kind of hard to see on here but if you look you can see it's not a real heavy coat I left a little bit of the wood grain showing through so then this was super simple because I did not have doilies that I liked and like I said I'm going to show you all these but of course I've already got some that are dry so I'm going to set that there and just show you that I did these with a super light coating and I used peony, even though here in Texas I like to call it peony. Sorry, I can tell that we're at a weird angle there. That hopefully will be a little better. And I'll be moving these up um, to show you up close. And all I did was, is I gave them a slight mist, nothing major, because I'm going for a soft look. And uh, so I didn't do a whole lot of this color. But if I stuck with the cotton candy, which is the other color I used, it, it was a little too light. So I found that if I mixed a little, that, and then I dabbed it just a touch to let it all soak in. Let's see. I may not have enough light. If I don't have enough light, somebody can text me. Let's see if this is a little better. Now I think that puts a glare. Y'all can tell me. 
Okay, so here we go. And you can see it's just a light pink. And when it dries, it, it's funny, it kind of actually pinks up a touch more. But um, So that's all I did with the doilies. And then to, let's keep that all the way. And then to put them on, here's some that I have already ready to go. I'm losing my mind. I'm a little frazzled tonight for some reason. I'm not real sure why. But to put them on, I used, um, I told you I was frazzled. I'm missing my thing I used. Well, this is a first. Okay, I think we can use a paintbrush. But what I used was um, some of the so the Golden Soft Gel, and this is matte. And, you know, I've told y'all before that I prefer a matte. And I actually cut it. And I should mention, too, that on my blog, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to be sharing all the close-ups of the yellow one so y'all can see it. But I cut it. I'm just going to cut this one in half because none of them are exactly the same. And put a little bit of gel medium on the back. And the reason I use this instead of like Mod Podge or something is this tends to me to dry much faster and much smoother. And then I just popped it in place. Let's see. So you can see here that you can put it wherever and if it goes over no biggie this is just a doily so it is pretty easy to manipulate and that's it and then I do want to put one on the side here because I want the front to kind of be more done than the others so you can see I did some extras and they're inexpensive so if you have extras that's not a bad thing And I'm working with this on a little bit of wax paper. Um, if you have one of the Teflon mats or silicone mats, they will work just as well. I just haven't bought one yet. I'm not quite sure why, but don't have one yet. So I'm using wax paper because if you try to do this, and you could wrap this around, but because I worked ahead, I've already done some of the green on it. Um, but if you, uh, if you do it on paper, It'll, sometimes the doily will stick, and I didn't want that to happen because then it tears it. Now, if it does tear, we're putting so many layers on here, you probably won't, wouldn't have even noticed. And that's it for the gel medium. And then the other thing I did was I did go in with a tiny bit of clear gesso and put that over the top of it. Oh, that's not what I want to do. Okay, hang on. Um, and the reason I did that was is when we start doing working with the watercolor, what I found was is that when I was experimenting, what I found was is that if the doilies weren't sealed a bit, what ended up happening is is that the paint did not run as well. So I'm just putting, and I'm talking just enough to kind of seal it. Nothing, not a whole bunch. You don't want it real wet. Just a little bit to seal it. And I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit there since this is where we're working. And then I dried it. And I think it was Jen or somebody last week said that when I did my hair dryer, it sounded like a jet or something. It was so loud. And I actually got this in the mail today. So, isn't it quiet? So cool. And at first I thought, I kept wanting to turn it up because, you know, with the hair dryer, if it's quiet, yeah, my, my camera is dropping on me. Hang on one sec. Let's, let's fix that because that's going to get annoying with y'all trying to watch. Let's see if I can get that fixed. It's going to be one of those nights maybe. Hopefully not. Hopefully I can get it fixed and it'll be no biggie. Okay. If it drops, let me know. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm trying to read. I'm seeing that y'all are asking about the matte, the matte gel. And this one happens to be, I'll show you, it's a soft gel. And the thicker ones, I would not think, you would need the, uh, 
the tool, which I'm going to have to get because I don't know how I can mask with a paintbrush. So I'm going to have to grab a tool here in a sec. Uh, I guess there's a, you have to have one time you forget something, right? Uh, but uh, I think the thicker ones would not work with, with this. Okay, so, and I don't have it laying in here. Let me grab it real quick, y'all. Okay, I'm so sorry, <laughs> but we're going to need it, so I'm going to keep thinking about it. Okay, I have it now. And the camera... I even checked this camera earlier today to make sure that it would stay put because for some reason last time it didn't and it was so irritating when I went back and took a peek at it. Okay, now here's the next step. We'll move on from that. I'll let it go. <laughs> These were included in one of the kits and for the life of me, I can't remember who, but they are actually a pearlescent and they're, water, they're pearlescent watercolor paint and they, they really have a nice sheen, but they're not like over the top. And if you get the mixed media kits, I'm almost positive that was the one it was included in. And I really wanted to play with them, and this was the perfect time. So what I did was I started out with a little bit of water and um, I don't know who taught me, but somewhere along the way I picked up the tip that if you spray your paints a little bit before, they will, um, this camera, they will uh, be easier to work with. They'll be wetter. So I'm going to move the white behind so we get rid of the white. Okay. So what this was really simple. And what we did was, what I did was, is I took a regular paintbrush. And hopefully y'all can see, is, that too, is this better without glare? Hopefully. Okay, I'll, I'll try to watch, but we're just going to move along. And then I used a light green, and you can see that through all my process, I used this little bit darker one more. So I've, I'm kind of mixing them tonight, but I like to have a, a different color of greens. And mixed together, I like that. It gives it some different color. And then you're gonna, I'm going to lift it up where y'all can see a little better. And then what I did was, is I just dabbed a bunch of it on here. It doesn't need to be, I mean, you can see I'm really doing nothing more than dabbing it on. Can y'all see that? Let's see. It's got a little bit of sheen. Let's see if that moves it a bit. Okay. And then after I had it dabbed on, I took and I put some water. And y'all are going to be able to see better when it starts to, to run. And I just let it run down. And I'm going to tap it a bit. You won't see it for a sec, but I just kept tapping it till it started to run. And see how it started to run here? And when I do the top, y'all will be able to see a little bit better, I think, because it'll be flat. So see? And the other thing is, too, the reason I did the clear gesso is because if you don't, the, the doilies will soak it up since they're paper. They'll soak it up different and it, the runs won't be as good. And then the last thing about the clear gesso is, is it makes it perfect for you to be able to uh, wipe off if you get too many runs in any places you don't want them. And if for some reason it won't run, just add a little bit more water. Okay, so... Super easy. It's not a perfect science. This is going with the flow type thing. And just keep adding a little bit of water till you get it where you want it. And then we're going to dry it a little bit. Ah, I just figured out what was wrong with the camera, I think. <laughs> While we were drying, I was looking. And even this one does that blow hard. But you can also uh, blow it a little bit with your hair dryer if you want. So you could use a real hair dryer instead of this one and dry it around.
Okay. And then what I did too is, is I did it that way, and I actually did it on the other side on this one, but we're just going to, we're going to go with it and add a little bit more here and there. And I want to do some coming down here on this side. And then I'll show y'all. And I'm just going to do this side real quick. And then we're going to flip it over and move on. And see how it sits on top of the doily instead of soaking in because of that gesso? Put it closer. It's funny how it always goes so much smoother when you're just working by yourself, but probably goes not any smoother. You're just not aware of all the times you get up to go grab something or search for something. Okay, now let's do the other side. And to do this, if you look at this, on this side I have it go. whenever I come from the bottom, I'm building upwards, so I wanted my runs to kind of build upwards as well. So I did it just the exact, I'm trying to think, I did it this side. We're going we're gonna to get back on track to make it easy and the, for the sake of time. And do a few here on this side. And that's it there. Give it a little bit of a dry. I've got a horrible glare. Maybe if I move it back a bit. I guess since my camera keeps moving and evidently that's the way it's going to be tonight. Uh, it's a good thing I didn't do like you hear like the newscasters do where they've got a suit on top and good thing I put on jeans and didn't wear sweats tonight or something that didn't match at all. <laughs> okay, and then a little bit. I also did it on top, so we're going to add a little bit on top too. And this one I just kind of started wherever on the top and did the ex it, everything here is the same thing and actually it looks like maybe y'all can see here I'm gonna add a little bit of this darker green to see if y'all can see because all the different greens are gonna be good and then gave it a tap and see how it's starting to run let's see if I can show y'all So, see, here we go. Where you can see, I think the sheen may be what should have. I, I did all this experimenting to make it work so I could do it in an hour or hoped I could do it in an hour. And I probably should have turned on the camera to make sure I could, y'all could see it well. Okay, and a little more dry. This one is running all the way down, and that's fine, but I'm going to soak up a touch just in the interest of time to make it dry a little quicker. It'll still look pretty, but I'm not going to let it keep running quite as long. And if you just touch it with a paper towel, it'll still leave the drip look, but it'll just get rid of a little bit of that part that's taking it so long. So if you just touch it with like a little bit of the corner or something, that's perfect. And while I'm drying, I'm going to get us out a piece of paper to show y'all because I added some leaves. Um, after I did this, I thought I really want it to have just a few little leaves and uh, because I basically am building a, a vine and a, a flower arrangement for lack of a better way to put it. I don't know if y'all can hear one of my dogs. She's under my desk with her toy bothering me and telling me that I should be playing with her not talking to y'all and I think that's part of the problem they hear me talking nobody's here they think it's 
time to be talking to them. Okay, I'm going to show y'all first on a piece of paper. And this, I'm going to move this where y'all can see. This, I took a tiny bit of water. And then I dipped here, and I don't want to get in that part I have too wet. And then these, I don't know how you really make a leaf. So I'm just giving the illusion. And I'm going to pull this up where you can see. And it's basically just keeping your edge straight and then pulling it to the side and then down. Let me actually use a darker color and show y'all bigger. Okay. So you've got your straight edge on your thing. And like I said, I'm going to do this bigger than I actually did. And then you're going here and pulling down. So it's just basically an illusion. And this brush is a little too small to go that big. But... And I'll show you on the birdhouse as we're going to. So I went through and I used the darker color to make it show up a little bit. I'm going to use the darker to make it show up. And I'm just going to add a few little leaves. And my paint is a little too wet right now. And we're just going to put them here and there. Like I said, we're just giving a hint of it. They're not, obviously they're not a real leaf because... I'm not putting veins or anything in them. So you can see, I just added some here and there. And basically just kind of framing and giving us the idea of that vine look. And just a few. I'm not doing a whole bunch anywhere. I can do a couple here. But you can see it's super fast. And then I, I did not add those ahead of time. So I'm going to put a few on here and there on the other spots. See how that works? And even the places we're not doing any actual flowers, I'm still adding a few just to go with. Let's see. There you go. You can see here. Certain angles. It just doesn't, I think it's, I think it may be a little bit, there's a little bit of sheen, I guess, because of the, uh, the gesso. I'm going to turn it over. Let's see. I can't find a place to move it where there's no light. And you can see, you can do a few, uh, with each time you load your brush, but you're using a very little bit of, of paint uh, and you don't want to get it, because everything else is so soft, you don't want to, um, it doesn't need to be like super dark either. So you definitely do want to make sure you have some water. I'm, no telling what some of these are going to look like because I'm trying to watch to see if y'all can see instead of, uh, see, do I have some on each section? I do. And then the last thing I did is you can see underneath here where I dabbed all that paint, it got kind of messy. So I took my paintbrush and did a little bit more paint and kind of smoothed that out. And that's the beauty of working on gesso is you can. And I just added some hints of green to all the different spots so it wouldn't be like all of a sudden our vines and stuff ended. They flew, they flow a little bit onto the, uh, the other section. Didn't want big white blobs. And you can just use any of these greens. I would say probably use the greens that you like best with your, uh, whatever your cardstock you decide or your leaves on your flowers you use. Um, any of that would work. So here we go. So there's our base. <laughs> okay. I, I'm sorry, y'all. I, I hate that I'm having camera troubles tonight, especially when I'm doing a project that's pushing the time limit, time limits anyway. Okay, so that is it for that part. And then, if you got the kit, and this, these are so light, they're already dry. I'm not even having to dry them. But if you got the kit, and if you didn't get the kit, this is a Prima stencil, and it's one of the new ones. And I cannot find the packaging to save my life, so somebody else will have to tell them which one it is. 
but I love how subtle it is. And this I use uh, modeling paste, and it's just another layer, and I'll show you here on the yellow one. Let me move that one where you can see. And I just put it, for some places I did a lot, and some places I did a little, but it's just building your layers for interest. Let's see. Okay. And I'm what I'm going to do in the, because it's already 820, I'm already getting there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the top and the front tonight. And I already have the close-ups posted and ready to, not posted, but ready on my blog. And I'm going to share all the, the other views with y'all on my blog. Um, because everything is done exactly the same. And I know that dry time, we just simply will not be able to do all the sides of something like this in an hour. And this, I did do a light layer. It's not a real heavy layer. So we're going to do the front and the and the top. And you can see here, I'm not necessarily, I'm not going edge to edge. I'm just getting some of it on there. And this, uh, if you couldn't see it very well on the on the camera, it is like just little flowers. And they're not uniform, and I like that they're not real uniform. They're kind of here and there. And you can even take it and put a little bit on the top and just get, it's basically going to give you nothing more than a few dots. And then on the, on the front, I just stuck it in here. Got a mess there. Use some of my extra. Oh. <laughs> well, I think it's time to get something new to hold the camera. This thing may have just worn out. And here, and if you get it, like I have a few places where you can see here where it's loose, just take your spatula thing and take them off real quick. And since the flowers wrap around, I am going to put a tiny bit on the side. And you can see, I didn't even hold that, but see, it still does fine. And same here, because the flowers are going to, whoops, helps if you don't touch it. Flowers are going to wrap around. She said you could see my dog, too. At least she was quiet, so that's saying something. <laughs> Okay, let's do, let's dry this up a little bit. And that is the base, y'all. It's literally that simple. And even though it seems to be running a little long, not, not too bad for 30 minutes. See, I told y'all, I keep wanting to turn this up. <laughs> but I do like that, um, unlike the, uh, what do you call it? A hair dryer, for one, it's not as loud. And I have found through this, while well, I've been playing with it a little bit today, it doesn't make my projects bubble. Like sometimes if I'm in a hurry and I'm using the heat gun, it'll make it bubble. And that drives me crazy when things start bubbling. And I did notice one little place I forgot. So I'm going to pick that up because it'll be hard to go back and do that. Uh, here we go. I didn't do any, and I want to make sure you do know. Don't do not do what I did on this one and leave all this blank. You want a little bit of texture in each place. So I did leave this blank, and it needs a little bit. And since I'm doing a thin a thin part, uh, what do you got? Thin layer, this works great because it's going to dry quickly. And same thing. If you have to, just go in and scratch it off a little bit. Okay. Let's see. Um, I see you're asking about modeling paste. It is. It says modeling paste, but it also says gel medium. So, um, it's 
not a real heavy, thick thing, I would say. So I, I would say it probably is a lot. Okay, let me do the top a little. Just want to make sure we get it dry enough to start gluing on without smearing it everywhere. Yeah, it's about done. And whatever it is, it dries really quickly, <laughs> which is always a plus, right? Yeah, it doesn't have texture. Um, it's it's definitely, it, it says modeling paste. I know a lot of people say molding paste, um, but it's definitely not a texture medium. It's very smooth, um, almost creamy. Oh, the brand is Liquitex. But I've used, I know other companies make other brands and people love them. So, um, I know, well, and actually I've used the 13 Arts and it, it's fabulous. It, and it actually has the same texture as this. So, if you have the 13 Arts or if you go get it in the store for a discount, uh, it, it's really similar in texture. I don't think, no, no difference that I have noticed. So, here we go. That is our base, and let me scoot it up where you can see. And if I had time, I'd go back, and you can do this, I'd go back and add a little bit more green to the top because I don't think it has quite enough. But it all comes down to taste, so it's whatever you would like to do. Um, if you want to do brighter greens than what I used, that's an option. You could even go through, and there's brown in that container of watercolors. There's so many colors to play with. So now we're going to move on to the next thing, which is adding the ribbon. And I'm going to show y'all how I do this, because I know everybody probably has their own favorite way. This is seam tape, and it is 100% nylon, or no, rayon, I believe. But anyway, when you get it wet, it's like really awesome. So all I did for the ribbons was, wrong scissors, but I tied them in a bow and I left long things and this is a shoestring bow. And I've actually done this with paint or whatever, but this one, I kind of wanted it to go with my doilies that I had already sprayed. And it doesn't even matter if this bow's not even. You can even it up or you can knot. It doesn't matter. I'm, it, we're not going to show. You're not even going to be able to see it's a bow. And then what I did was I gave it a light misting of water. And the main reason is, is that I did not want it to hold too much color. And then I went back with the same colors that I used um, the peony. And again, it's just a little. And you can see, I think y'all can see that pretty well. And then I went back with the same cotton candy I used. And this one is actually already a bit pink, but for the yellow one, I used a cream and I sprayed it with the yellow colors. If you have white, you can spray it. That's what I, I love about these mists. And then what I did was I wadded it up, seriously, like this, and I let it dry. And at the end, you get these pieces like this. And these are the dried ones. So you can also, if you can make your bow more uniform and just use water, you can use paint and it'll it'll make it kind of, um, what do you call it, stiff. And the mists make it a tiny bit stiff as you can see from this, but it's still, it's still able to be manipulated. And I'm not sure if Alda, and I haven't seen Alda post in a little bit. I'm not sure if Alda has it in the store or not. I've seen her, I think, use it. Okay, yes, Cynthia says Alda does have it in the store. So you'll definitely be able to get your hands on it. Okay, so here, then I started with, this is, again, we're building our base. And so I did Fabri-Tac, which is also in the store and also will be at a discount as soon as all that gets internet. And you can see here, here's my bow. You can kind of see, but I'm ignoring the bow. I, I was going for having different amounts here and there. I was going for just a background that I'm gonna tuck my flowers on top of and around. And so I'm gonna pull this up close here in just a sec. 
But as y'all know, the fabric tack will, will dry pretty quickly. So we can set it there. And like here, I don't like how flat it is. So we have some manipulation time. And I want it to be seen. So I want it to have some texture. I don't want any flat pieces. And then just simply cut off, like this is too much. Just give it a little snip. You can, that was a bad little snip. I like to cut it at an angle too. I will admit it. And it bugs me to death if it's a straight cut. So, uh, and then I'm going to flip it because over here it kind of goes around. And that tail I'm going to tuck under this little eave here. Maybe. So I can get the glue out again. <laughs> And you can use your scissors if I could find mine. Uh, yeah, these are non-stick. These are nifty. And you can just push them down. And so you can see here, and I may go back when I start placing my flowers. I may go back and snip this, and I may not. So just leave it for now as you're working. And you can always make those decisions later. And we're going to do the same thing on all the places that we're going to build our floral section. And this one, too, I'm going to wrap around the edge. And have it stick out here a bit. So see where we're going here? Okay, I need a paper towel. I have one of those. My glue bottle does not like me. And it, this one for some reason wants to bubble up and cause a mess. Okay, now the other thing is too, is we're going to be doing some stuff here on the top. And so I built... I also put a couple of, it's hard when you get too close, I put a couple of ribbons up here too. And like I said, remember, we're just going to go ahead and do the top and the front for now. If we have time, I'll go back and walk through the rest. But and the, just to make sure that I'm able to let y'all go in about an hour. And this, because remember, we're going to build, we're going to put flowers all over it. So I just want to put it wherever and I'm, I'm not going to glue it all over because this one I know I will probably be trimming but for now I'm not going to trim it until I see how it's working with the flowers so you can see here and let's go ahead and put a little bit here to give us almost a circle to work with so reason you have nonstick scissors is so you can use them so here you go. And we can already tell, I said I wasn't going to trim them, but we can already tell this is going to be a little long. So let's go ahead and give it a snip. And I'm going to set these pieces aside in case I want to tuck them in somewhere. So here you can see. I like projects whenever you don't have to think a lot. <laughs> It's, it's kind of neat where, and when there's no real right or wrong way, it's kind of whatever you want to do and however it turns out. Because um, as like, like you could tell from the way I showed you I did the ribbon, you, you're, you're letting, you're not having to be in control of that because it's going to do what it's going to do. So here we go. And we'll move the camera again. <laughs> Y'all will say my class tonight made y'all seasick. Okay, now we're going to start doing the flowers. And the flowers, um, for the yellow one, I used the flowers that were in the March kit. Um, when I changed colors, I decided that I didn't, since I was going pink, uh, I actually looked for some similar flowers. But then I thought, why would I go and buy flowers? Um when I can't find them, for one, but also buy something whenever I have these white ones. And these, I think, are in the store, and if they're not, they are the Prima, and they are, I think they're called Rodanth or something. 
But anyway, these things go on forever. There are 64 flowers in here. So I took these same flowers and I missed it on the same way. And since we've already missed it, I'm gonna, I'll do just a quick reminder that I used the same two colors. I used the cotton candy and the peony. Ah, uh, see, I did it. Messed it up. It's peony. It's peony. <laughs> I can't even get it right when I'm trying. So frustrating, this camera. Okay, so I missed it on exactly the same way. And these are five petal flowers instead, but I used those. And then I just used some picks. And these can be any pearls, whatever. It doesn't even matter. These aren't the same one I same ones I use, but they're the ones I have. And then um, I also used these beautiful little flowers from Petaloo. That one's got mist on it. Let's pull out this package. I've misted everything in my world lately, but these are uh, Dar. I can't say this, but anyway, Dar Darjeeling, Darlene, Darlene. Anyway, they're uh, petites, and these are tea stained pink. And they're really pretty little things to tuck in. And then the other thing I used is I got in the store were these dies. And I did leaves with the dies. And these are dynamics. And I think they're called my favorite things. And they're called wild greenery. And they're really neat. There's lots of shapes, but I just stuck with the let me see if I can get it. I'll show you the two I stuck with. Well, we'll just dump the whole thing. Here we go. <laughs> so I just stuck with these two shapes. And it's the same thing, larger and smaller. And actually, all the ones in here have a large and a small version. So these are really nifty. And, of course, I did pre-cut all the... I think everybody knows how to do a die. So, And if not, I will certainly share that with you if you're struggling with it. I'd be happy to help. Okay. Whoops, there I went the water. <laughs> okay, so here's a bunch of the pieces. And I went ahead and I used, I can't believe it. I'm grabbing things. Okay, I used um, Old Road and I did do a little bit of ink on them. And for these, because I'm not going for anything perfect, I basically just laid them flat and rolled a little bit on. So, very, very simple to do. All right, so now we're ready to build it. And I, I think that the easiest way probably is to go ahead and start with your picks. And again, we're just going to use the Fabri-Tac and we're going to glue it down. And I'm going to get me a little paper. One thing I'll show y'all, sometimes I think it's just easier instead of using the Fabri-Tac out of the bottle for when you're doing a bunch of pieces really quickly is to just go ahead and put a little bit on here on a piece of paper or whatever and just drag your stuff through it. And um, if you're if you're going to be taking very long, this isn't a good move. But if you're if you're moving quick and that's what we're doing with this because we're building is uh It'll stay wet long enough. And we're just going to start tucking some stuff in. And these actually have wire, so that was a little longer than I wanted. So I'm no biggie. I just bent it, hold it in place. And all this stuff can be, the thing I love about the wire parts is, is they can be manipulated later, too. You can go back in. And you can see I'm just cutting off the edges of each piece. Oh, except that for some reason this one, everything's going wrong tonight. It's just one of those days, right? And we're going to tuck this in. And if any glue is showing, it's not a problem here because, again, we're going to be building the flowers. On, we're going to be laying the flowers on top. Okay, I'm going to tuck it in here. That one again is a little long. I 
I'm, I'm looking at the chat a little bit, and I love that y'all are telling them because it does stay wet a little bit because I know so many of y'all have worked with this probably long before I did. And it really is a neat thing. I, I call it my hot glue without the heat because it kind of has that same texture. All right. And then I went in and add, started adding some leaves. Y'all should know that I knocked over my whole water bottle. I'm telling you, nothing is easy to knot. And so most of my leaves got wet. <laughs> But I've decided that I'm not going to worry about that. And then I stuck these in here. And that one's a little long. Let me show you up close a little so you can see where we're going here. And I tuck these in here and there. Again, I just did a couple in each little section to mix the colors. Um, I didn't want it to end up, you can see here that these two colors are both, they're just a green cardstock. Uh, they're, they're close, they're like in the same color family, but they're basically just different tones, and I like that look. Okay, I will say that word here in a bit, because I actually have saved it for you. <laughs> uh, somebody's asking what came with the kit, and I'm not sure what you're talking about. Okay. Here we go. I need to watch what I'm doing instead of the chat, but I'm trying to do both. Okay. Yay, all this back. All right. Doesn't want to come out. There we go. And I'm going to add a couple down at the bottom and at the sides. Same concept. We're just tucking them in. Between the little pearl legs on the little pearl and the little stem parts of the leaves, they're getting tangled up a little bit. And I'm using mostly the big ones, but the small ones are good too. Oh, wrong thing in the glue. We shouldn't be surprised. And here I'm going to tuck a little small one on top. Okay, so here's our base, and I don't like how these are sticking out. I want to bring them back in. And like I said, that's the that's the beauty of the Fabri-Tac, is, it allows you to mess with it. And because they tend to want to pull over there, I'm going to take a little bit of glue behind. Pull that down. And then we're going to start tucking in our flowers here and there. And actually, let's stick one over here because this flower thing, I do, I did want it to go around and not just be on the front only. So I think it's a good idea to tuck a piece here and there on this. And I'll use a small one here too. So you can see here. And then you can still see that I'm staying kind of, I'm leaving, see where I place the leaves? This is probably a better up way to show it is, you can see that they're still a little bit visible um, because I, now that we've gone further, you can see that I purposely placed them away from where I was building everything. Okay, now we're ready for flowers. It's a good thing I did decide to just do the front and the thing because we, it seems like embellishing always takes longer than we think. And these flowers... Okay, here's where I gave them a pinch for my girls that want to hear that word every time. And I put a little glue in the center and tucked them down. It's 
same here. And I kind of, I don't want them to be exactly the same. So let me move this again. So it's my, I'm just going to follow my camera instead of that. So you can see that I'm just tucking them down in there. And then I used um, just some flat back pearls for the centers. It says I have so much glue on my hands already. Y'all should know I did my nails today. I always wonder why, but it works. Okay, so see? And what I did was I'm just tucking them up. And see, my little ribbon is still showing a little here and there. It's basically just for building purposes. And then I went in and tucked some of these in. And these are neat. <laughs> this is going to be our class that we go back and reference how not to do it because it seems like there has been nothing go smoothly. And these I'm doing the same thing. And since my glue is here, I'm just dipping them a little bit in the glue. I'll come over. And then I put some on the, both sides of the leaf and then tuck the flower on, and that way I lost the leaf a little bit, but um, kind of takes care of both things at one time, except that that leaf wants to get behind that pearl, and I want it in front where we can see it with its different color because it's another color as well, and we're just going to, actually, I'm just going to hold this. I'm just going to work, and we'll just move along. There we go. And seriously, no rhyme or reason. These are not the same pink. And they don't have to be. They can be anything you want to anything you want to work with. I'm gonna put one here. And I'm okay with it all coming over here, with it overlapping a bit on the side. And I'm not going to do it, but you could even put one, well, heck, why not? Let's stick one up there. And this one, I'm just going to put a little flower just to have one there on the side. You can see I just tucked it up under there. And on camera, it's a little hard to see, but in real life, you'll be able to see all these little things when you're looking at it. Let's do a couple more. And these, I'm using the larger ones, but there's there's many sizes in this package of these flowers. So you could choose to go more smaller ones and do more of them. Uh, totally your personal preference. In fact, we'll put a small one right here with this one. Actually, let's do a big one. We'll do a small one up there by the bird. I, I did that on the other one too. Also the yellow one, it was the same thing. There was more than one size. And there were several several more colors, or I say several. There was like, I want to say four colors of the yellow. So they all went together beautifully. I chose to go with, you know, a little bit of a lighter color to go with the more monochromatic look. But it would be beautiful to go bright. It, it truly does come down to what your personal preference is. I'm going to stick these in here. And I am going to go back and glue these down correct so they'll stay permanent. Be sure when you're done, in the interest of time, I'm putting them down without the glue on the back. But definitely be sure to put glue on the back of these. That way they'll stand the test of time. It'd be pretty irritating to have to keep going back and, and adding glue every time something popped off. This way, this fabric tackle will last. And also, another tip is hot glue. This lasts better than hot glue, too, because this, if it gets hot, isn't going to pop off. And my experience with hot glue over the years is, is that quite often it'll just give up. It's done. Let's see. And tucking these here and there. And then I know we're, I know I'm on borrowed time here. We're getting close. 
So we're going to do the whole front, and I do have a picture of the top too, and it, it's seriously the exact same thing. So you can look at it and copy it or use it for inspiration, however you would like to. Okay, so that is the front section. As soon as I get it stuck to the birdhouse and not my fingers. So you can see the pink, and I'm not liking how this is real green right here, so I'm going to bend my pearl up in here. And you could even tuck another pink flower up in there, but these pearls can be moved to where they're not so lined up. And you, you've got a lot of leeway. Like I said, it, it ends up being what you want to do. And in fact, whoops, now I'm stuck to the paper. I'm going to add a another pink flower here, this little section. And I'm not even going to bother with the leaf. It's just a little dead section I didn't like. And so you can just visually choose where you want to put things. Okay, now this is the weirdest birdhouse ever. And I know the ones that Alda has in the store have a perch and this one does not which is so strange but our birds need a place to sit so we're going to build us another little section with the same products and I had these I wanted a bird so I had these resin birds and they're from Prima they're vintage trinkets and they say like a door love and I've used the one out of this one but I have the resin bird left because I, I use the the twig with the words and I liked that this little guy was white and uh, he just fit in perfectly with that soft monochromatic you know not a lot of color but still color so it's pretty and what I did was is I glued him down I mean seriously as is nothing to it obviously and so when I got him out I was like Okay, he looks cute here, but he looks kind of ridiculous, like hanging out there, and I decided that we were going to build around him, too. So, these little extra pieces I talked about are going to come in handy. Here we go, and I'm going to tuck a couple of them on him, so probably just one, and I'm going to do it here at the end. Let's see if we can stick another one in there. Okay. And then I took, I'm going to take a smaller flower. Oh, actually, I need some little thing, some little stems. I'm going to take a couple of the stems. And I know I've got the glue. Let me move it where y'all can see it again so you can see what I'm up to. And I'm just, I've got the glue. It, it seems to be messy tonight, so... It's kind of making it nice though as far as this goes and I want these to kind of go this way and they're actually too long here's another thing too I don't like how long these are so I'm gonna cut them off and just use the section I want and tuck them on All right, so you see where we're going, and we're going to use a smaller flower. I'm going to tuck it in, and because this is taking a little while to set up, you're going if you're doing it as fast, if you're working this fast, otherwise you can let it dry a little bit and come back. But working this fast. I'm kind of having to hold my, my bird in place. And then I want to add a couple of the leaves because I want it all to coordinate with the other and use a lot of the same different things I used here on the other sections. Let's scoot this whole thing. I've let it scoot down a little bit. Okay. And a flower. 
I'm talking to myself too now, in addition to y'all. Tuck one of those in. Let's give it a pearl center. Oh, sorry. Okay, so here you go. And you can see I just have a little hint of this sticking out. And I've made sure that I've got a little bit of everything. I did not add the pearls to this, and I didn't on the other. I looked over to see if I did. I thought about it, but these pearls especially are a little bit bigger. So, last thing. Once I got all this going, and I had all this done, the one thing that I did not like was is that some of it looked like multicolored and some of it didn't. So, I spray. This is gesso in a bottle. And I left the lid off of it on purpose because I will warn y'all that I do have trouble. I have had trouble with the, the things clogging. But this one's going to work. Okay. And it's going to have a little... This is nothing more than gesso in a bottle. And I would say it's mixed very little uh, gesso to water. And I gave it all a light misting. And let's see if you can see that. And that also, like I'm going to concentrate on these hot pink flowers because I am going for a little bit more of the monochromatic. And as it dries, it'll whiten it all up a tiny bit, but it won't be a lot. And I got a little more there. I want that green to show. So you can dab it off. You've got plenty of time. And there we have it. There's the front. And like I said, be sure to look at my blog because I have, I'll, I'll show pictures of everything on the yellow one. And then I'll actually come back and I'll uh, show y'all the pink one too. I'll finish it up and show y'all. So actually even took a little longer than I thought. But hang on one sec. Let me pull up where you can see me. Maybe the, maybe the camera will stick here. <laughs> okay. Well, I really appreciate all of y'all staying with me tonight because, I, I like I said, we may have to have a, a show on who had the most disasters in their class, but I really enjoyed it, and I hope that y'all did like the techniques and all. So, love to have y'all back. I'll be teaching probably in, a, I think it's a month, and next week we have Lynn, and don't miss hers. Hopefully hers will go a little bit more smooth than mine. But thanks so much for tuning in, and y'all have a great night. Bye-bye.